Hello friends, in this video we'll be working on the power supply for the Altair 8800. The original Altair 8800 used uh, transformers and capacitors uh, to uh, create the power for the computer. It was bulky and uh, not as uh, stable and it was also heavy. So in our computer we'll be using uh, these regulator power supplies. The Altair 8800 uh, has three different voltages or requires three different voltages, positive 8 volts, positive 16 volts and negative 16 volts. I couldn't find one power supply that could that had all those voltages so I got three different ones. Uh, the big one here is 10 amps um, 7.5 volts and I'm gonna adjust it here to uh, 8 volts and it has a little knob that can be turned and adjusted to 8 volts so I'm just gonna check the voltage here and we can see here it's 7.5 and I'll just use a screwdriver here to adjust it to 8 volts and it's the knob is uh, very sensitive so you just need to turn it uh, slightly to adjust it now the two other power supplies they're both 1 amps uh, 15 volts and uh, one will keep as a positive uh, 16 volts so first we get adjusted to 16 volts from 15 and we'll keep it as a positive 16 volts and the other one will basically switch the wires around so that it's going to be negative 16 volts and we'll, we'll also adjust that one as well. We also want a fan in our Altair case. Uh, it's not required but it's nice to have and I found a 5 volt fan online that I want to use here. Uh, unfortunately we don't have a 5 volt power supply so we need to add some kind of, some kind of uh, voltage step down um, to power the fan and fortunately I, I found a little uh, variable voltage regulator on Amazon. It was maybe like ten dollars. We'll use this little device to uh, connect to the eight volt power supply, and then the other end will connect to the fan itself. And <clears throat> this voltage regulator has a variable resistor, which can be adjusted. And this one needs to be turned quite a bit <laughs> until it starts uh, adjusting the voltage. So just just an FYI, um, but. It, it, it has worked very well in the past for me. And here we're uh, uh, gluing the voltage regulator on the fan itself. It's gonna stay there. And the wires are a little bit too long so we can just trim them. The black and the red, we do not need the yellow wire. This is a variable speed fan, but we will only use one speed. And we'll just go ahead and solder the wires in place. Um, and then we need to adjust the voltage and actually I need to unsolder the wire, one of the wires so that the fan doesn't come on when I plug it in or turn it on. And uh, we need to step down the voltage here from 8 volts, which is the power supply we'll be using, down to 5 volts, which is the voltage that is required for this fan. And then we can solder the wire back on and kind of clean up the wires and everything. I actually ended up adding this little connector here so that I can connect the fan to the case and then we can basically plug it in once it's inside the case. It's going to make it easier to manage. And the fan is then mounted in the case using uh, M3 bolts. My bolts weren't long enough so I couldn't reach all the way through but it was it worked well enough. We also want to make sure that the fan is blowing out out of, out of the case instead of in. Uh, we want to pull the heat out. Uh, the next on the list is uh, to make this connector which will connect to the motherboard or the back plane. And this connector has uh, six wires connecting to it um, coming from the power supplies. Uh, two wires per power supply um, and the wires are color coded based on the power supply so the yellow wire is the positive 8 volts, uh, green wire sorry the blue wire we don't want to use the green wire that's for ground the blue wire is for the positive 16 volts and the red wire is a negative 16 volts and we'll just uh, add these little crimp pins on the wires and then uh, they will just slide into the uh, connector itself um, and to crimp those things uh, there's a tool for that uh, if you want more information on that just let me know um, and they just basically slide into the connector we want to make sure that we're connecting the right wires into the right uh, pin location. Um, 
and then uh, I just realized that I actually put them in the wrong way uh, they, they won't connect the other way so I'm just swapping them out here just to make sure that they're in the right direction and that should plug in nicely we will use a 3 amp fuse so we're gonna install a fuse holder to be used at a later time and using this washer we can tighten in place uh, we can now install the power supplies into the case and if you can see here I made some lines in the case to kind of help align the power supplies um, and help drill the holes for the where the uh, bolts will go and uh, we'll use these M3 screws and we want to make sure that they're, they're not too long because they can actually short the small power supplies um, and there's a little lead there that, that it can touch and short it so we want to make sure that they're not too long maybe a quarter inch um, and uh, also we're adding the, the lo this locking washer on there to kind of help uh, ground the case with the power supply. By using those screws we can mount the power supplies into the case. Um, it's a little bit tough to do so but it's doable. And on the other side uh, one thing that we can do is uh, scrape off the paint uh, where the screw where the bolt goes to kind of help uh, the locking washer uh, have better contact with the case itself so that the case is grounded because other things are attached to the case and requires grounding as well. I then install a terminal block for the power cables that will be coming in a, at a later time and the other side of the terminal block, block connects to the power supplies, the ground and the neutral wires. The black wire, the load wire, will connect to the fuse that we just installed in the previous step and the other side of the fuse will go to the switch, which we'll do in a later step. And from the switch, it will come back and connect back to the power supply here. The load wires coming from the fuse and the power supply will attach to this connector. The connector specs are in the instruction for the front panel. And they crimp, uh, they crimp in into the connector and the connector just clips in nicely into there. Uh, I also added some zip ties to the uh, uh, switch wires here to make it a little bit cleaner. And some heat shrink tubing was added to the fuse to keep it from contacting the power supply. The next thing is uh, to make these uh, wires here for the power cable. Uh, they, will, they will connect to the terminal block here in the back. And uh, we will use a little uh, holder thing. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It will hold the wire in place and keep it from moving and it came with the case itself. And it helps to use some pliers to squeeze this device, uh, this little connector, uh, help it push through the pre-drilled hole in the case. But this is what it looks like once, it, once it's in. And right next to the power cord is the fuse holder and we'll use this 3M fuse uh, which will go into the fuse holder. Um, it just slides in with this little um, uh, screw thing and we can use a screwdriver to uh, tighten it. And now with the power supply system completed, let's uh, power it on and see what happens. Fingers crossed. And there you have it, the fan is running, that means the power supply is working and the voltage regulator is working. So that is a good sign. In the next video, we will be putting it all together. All the boards that we have made so far will be installed into this computer, so stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.